Welcome to Milan Recording Studios. Today I am here in Studio B with my brand new, uh, to me, my brand new practice piano. Now about a year ago, uh, back in December, I found this practice piano at a uh, music shop in California and I really, really liked the piano, but however, I didn't know much about it. But I only spent about 10 minutes with the piano and I decided that this is the one I wanted for my practice piano. I liked the feeling of the action, I liked the way the piano sounded, and I figured that I would be very, very happy with how the piano played and I would be very happy to practice on it for a long time every day. But then the piano was um, delivered to Milan Recording Studios and it sat in Studio A in storage for a very long time. And between the time when I last saw the piano at the music store and it's since today, I've been wondering, am I still going to like the piano? Am I still going to think it's all right? And finally, just yesterday, we had it delivered to Studio B, which is where it is right now. And I'm realizing that it is actually an even better piano that I remembered. It has a beautiful, warm sound. It has a heavy but substantial and responsive action. And it also tunes up very, very well, which I will talk about in this video. And I'll also play the piano for you. And I'll even show you some of the inside parts that I've really not showed very much in my videos before. Because usually when I do videos on pianos, I'm at somebody's store. And they wouldn't like it if I just took apart the piano and showed you all the inside stuff. But since this is my piano, I'm going to take apart the, I'm not going to take apart the action, but I'm going to take out the action, show you how it comes out on this particular piano, and also show you the insides and how the mechanisms inside work. To some of that, which might be kind of interesting. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about this piano because some of you have probably never heard of this brand. And when I first saw this piano in the store, I figured, oh, that has to be a stencil brand because I've never heard of this name before. But actually, it was not a stencil brand at the time. The brand that you may be able to see on the fall board here is Schiedmeier. And like I said, you may not be familiar with the brand Schiedmeier. And that's because, especially if you're from the United States, Schiedmeier was not very popular in the United States. Now, this particular piano was actually a bit of a joint venture between the Schiedmeier company, which was a German company, and Kawai, which I'm sure all of you know as being the famous Japanese piano manufacturer. Essentially, what happened is Schiedmeier and uh, Kawai joined forces where Schiedmeier put their name on the piano and Kawai essentially built the piano. I believe some of it might have been to Schiedmeier's specifications, but essentially the piano was built in Japan and it says that on the badges, which I will show you on the inside in a little bit. But what's kind of interesting is there's also a lot of mystery that also surrounds this piano because there's not, there weren't very many made. Uh, when I purchased this piano, I did some research online to try to figure out more about the piano and I was only able to find one video of a Schiedmeier of this era and the serial number on that piano was only a hundred away from the serial number on my piano. So I don't think they made very many of these. I mean, that could have been a coincidence if the serial numbers were so close, but this is the only Schiedmeier of this era I've ever seen here in the United States. And I don't think that the uh, this joint venture between Schiedmeier and Kawhi lasted very long because simply the Schiedmeier name was so unknown that nobody really wanted to buy them. Because as you can see, the Schiedmeier name is on the fall board, the Schiedmeier name is on the inside of the instrument, and it doesn't say Kawhi anywhere on it, even though it does say made in Japan. So it was a little bit of an oddball piano that I don't think went over very well, and that's why the there's so few Schiedmeiers um, left. What happened is actually Steinway came in with the idea of the Boston piano, and Kawhi liked that idea much more. So eventually they just disposed of the Schiedmeier line, and they took on the Boston project, which as we all know has gone much better for Kawhi as well as Steinway. However, as far as a uh, Japanese piano with another manufacturer's name on it, I actually prefer the Schiedmeier piano to the Boston piano. The Boston pianos are okay, but I really, really like the way the Schiedmeier sounds. It has a beautiful, warm sound, and I just love how it sounds. And after I show you, I take you on a tour of the piano, and I show you some of the inside stuff, I will play a number of different little songs on this piano for you, and hopefully you will enjoy it. But now let's take a look at the inside here of the piano and just show you all the interesting little features of this piano. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the number of badges that are inside of the piano. There's actually quite a few. The first one that we're going to talk about here is the Schiedmeier badge right over here. As you can see, it says Schiedmeier, and then it also says Anno 1809, which I assume means that it was um, founded in 1809. It's a very cool badge. And then over here we have the serial number, which um, some of you may want to go online and look up and find some research about. I believe this piano is about 20 years old, but there you can see the serial number. It's S132832. If we come down here, we can also see the model name of this piano. This is a Schiedmeier C183, and the 183 refers to how many centimeters long the piano is, and in feet that translates to, I believe, exactly 6 feet and 0 0.0472 inches. So it's essentially a 6 foot long piano. We also have a large, very cool Schiedmeier badge on the soundboard underneath the strings, and it's got the um, feathery, the leafy lyre design, and then it says Schiedmeier 1809. And then around the ring of the circle, it says constructed and construction and design by Schiedmeier pianos. 
established 1809 and then manufactured in, in Hamamatsu, Japan. And Hamamatsu is a city in Japan, and um, Kawai makes a lot of their pianos in Hamamatsu. You can also take a look at the inside of the piano, the design of the general harp. As you can see, there's another badge right over here that's basically identical to the other one that's on the uh, soundboard of the piano, except this one is metal, and it has um, black outlines, just like the other one did. But it's a raised metal badge that I think is pretty cool. You can also see the design of the inside of the piano here. The harp is very simple, very flat, very modern. We have three small um, portholes. Actually, we have two small ones and one large one. We have very, two small ones here, and then we have one big one over there. So it's a rather interesting little design there on the portholes. Normally, I think there would be a porthole there, but they put the Schiedmeyer badge instead because the holes kind of, if there were a hole, they'd be consecutively larger. But I think they put a Schiedmeyer badge there instead. One thing I find kind of neat about this piano is the lid prop design. And it may seem, it may seem very unusual. That it's one of my favorite things about this piano. But it's a very well-designed lid prop. It's a very simple design as well. As you can see, we have two pieces here. We have the main lid stick, and then we also have the smaller one, which has a very nice quality, uh, heavy, satisfying feel to it. It doesn't feel loose or floppy. As you can see, I can set it anywhere, and it will sit there. So that hinge there is not going to be causing any buzzes. And we also have a lot of nice touches here to prevent buzzes. We have felt down here that's wedged between the two um, lid sticks and it seems like there might be I think it's only on the small lid stick but it could be on both of them so that there's not going to be any kind of buzzes coming from here there's also felt here and I assume there's some here and there's also on the back of the main lid stick there is a little metal bracket that's been attached to the main lid stick which is also covered in felt and that allows the smaller one to come in and nest there so I don't think there's going to be any kind of buzzes coming from this whatsoever and it's a very nice design and I like it so that's the inside of the Schiedmeyer piano, as you can see. It's a very simple piano, but it's also very nice, and I think you guys will like it, especially once you hear the sound of it. I do like this little touch they did, where they have this little braided rope that runs along the back of the piano, along the, uh, the soundboard there, along the back of the spine of the piano. It's just kind of an interesting touch that uh, it's a little bit neat. So now I said I would also show you some of the internal workings of the piano, I'll show you the action, show you how clean it is, and also just kind of show you a little bit of how some of the stuff inside there works. So now I'm going to show you how to take apart the piano to remove the action, and then I'll show you the inside of the piano, and after that I'll play some music on it. So stick around, I hope you enjoy. The first thing to do when you want to remove the action on the piano is to remove these two wing nuts that are found underneath the piano. And they're found underneath of the cheek block here. There's a little hole. I'm feeling it here, right here with my finger. It's right about there. And so these two wing nuts will go inside of it. There's one on that side, and there's also one on this end of the piano. And it's these large black wing nuts, as you can see, and they also kind of look a little bit like Mickey Mouse. But the first step that you'd want to do in removing the action on the piano is to go underneath and remove those wing nuts, because if they're not removed, you're not going to be able to take out the cheek blocks. But as you can see, I've already done that, so I'm going to set this down here. And talk about the second step in removing the action of the piano, which is to remove the fallboard. Now, as I've mentioned before in this video, uh, this piano was kind of a joint effort between Schiedmer and Kawai, and so some of these features on this piano that we will see on the inside may very well be Kawai features, and one of these that I know for a fact is a Kawai feature is the way this fallboard is designed, which is a very nice way that it's designed, by the way. So I've removed these two small little screws here. There's one that will go in the hinge mechanism here, and there's one that would go on the other side. So the first step you'd want to do in removing the fallboard would be to take out those screws. But as you can see, I've already done that. And the next step would be, of course, to remove the fallboard itself, which, as I've said, is a very nice mechanism in a uh, very nice way to remove the fallboard. Basically, you just swing the fallboard forward. And from there, I believe it simply lifts up. Lifts up and comes out, which is a really, really slick way to do a fallboard. Next up, we have to remove the cheek blocks, which is a very simple procedure on this piano. Simply all that happens is you pull it out just like that, and that is as simple as it is. You just pull the cheek block out. And now to put it back in after you have um, put the key slip back on, after you've worked on the action, you take the back end of the cheek block, and you put it in like that, and then you slide in a little more than that underneath that hinge mechanism, and then it will seat right in place like that. That's how you install it, and then again, to remove it, it just comes out.
The final thing to remove on the piano before you can actually slide the action out is the key slip. Now it's kind of interesting because the design on this key slip is somewhat similar to the way Steinway has designed their key slip, but it's also rather different. With a Steinway piano, you can just come along and pop the key slip up, at least with my Steinway D, there's no screws or anything, and it gently sets in there. You just lift it up and it pops up, then you can simply remove it. But the Schiedmeyer is slightly different. First of all, it friction fits in there very tightly, and second of all, you have to remove, as I showed you earlier, you have to remove the cheek block first before you can remove the key slip, because there's actually a little wooden lip on either side. I think it's wood. Uh, yes, it's a little wooden lip on either side that catches underneath the cheek block, and so you can't just remove the key slip. But the way it works, once you've removed the uh, cheek blocks, is you lift up on this end, because you can grab it, lift up on this end, and then your key slip is able to be removed. And that in itself is relatively, like I said, kind of similar to the way Steinway does it. There's four dowels underneath here that fit into four holes, and then that keeps the key slip in place. One interesting thing I wanted to note about the Schiedmeyer key slip, though, is it's got this big piece of metal here. As you can see, there's a little color difference there. This darker piece is actually metal, and for whatever reason, Schiedmeyer decided to put a big chunk of metal in their key slip, and I've never seen anyone who's done that before. The one, uh, my Steinway key slip, is simply all wood, and I believe that uh, my previous practice piano, my ball Baldwin also was all wood, uh, and I've never seen anyone put a large metal chunk like that on the key slip, but it has a very, very heavy feel, and uh, I'm sure they did it simply because it would be more structurally sound or some reason like that. I'm going to go, go put this away, and then we can slide the action out. So here is the action for the Schiedmeyer piano, and as you can see, it is in really, really good condition. Everything here is super clean. There's no dust. There's no dirt. This is just a little piece of felt that's on the underside of this rail here. Uh, there's absolutely nothing you know, wrong with the action. It's in perfect condition. As you can see, the screws here, they're still shiny like the day they, were, they came off the factory showroom, and uh, it's really, really great. The hammers here have um, almost no wear at all. They had no wear when I first got the piano, but I've played it a little bit, and so now there are some ever so slight wear marks in it. But as you can see, there's basically nothing uh, at all going on with the hammers on this piano. They're in really, really good condition, and I don't think this piano was like ever played before I came across it because there was like no wear whatsoever on the hammers at all. And the technician at the store said that she didn't dress the hammers whatsoever when they got this piano. So it basically had never been played before coming to the store or after I bought it. One thing I find kind of interesting about this, and I've never seen this before on a piano, and I hope you can see this, but down here at the bottom of the whippin, you can see that it's actually numbered, just like the key, and I've never seen that before. Maybe it's been done on other pianos and I've never noticed it, but uh, Schiedmeyer did this on their action here, and I find it kind of interesting that not only does the key have a whippin for number 26, I mean, the key have a number for number 26, but the whippin also has a number for number 26. So if you were taking apart the action, you'd know what order all the uh, the parts would go back in, and maybe other piano manufacturers have done that too, but I've actually never seen a little number stamped on top of the action part like that before. So it's, this is just a look at the inside of the action, just to show you that it's in really, really good condition, it's very clean, and it's basically like brand new. If you had told me this was a brand new piano action, I would believe you, because it looks brand new. So this is the cavity inside the piano where the action itself goes, and as you can see, this too is very, very clean. It also looks like a brand new piano. The wood doesn't look like it's aged at all. There's a very, very minimal amount of dust. I think there's a little tiny bit here, but there's basically nothing at all on the inside of this piano. It's very, very clean, and we have not brushed anything out of the piano at all. It's in really, really good, clean condition. But while I'm here, I wanted to show you guys something I've never showed before on a video on my channel, and that is how the internal mechanisms for the damper work, and I hope you guys might find this interesting. This silver bar here that I think is made of aluminum actually activates the damper pedal, so when you push the right pedal down, it lifts all the dampers up at one time, as you can see, and underneath of each damper is a small little adjustment that you can move with a small tool. If one of the dampers isn't raising up high enough, or it's raising up too high, or it sits too high, then you can use that little um, adjustment down there to adjust it. Now, different piano manufacturers do that differently, but uh, Schiedmeyer seems to have done it that way with a small little adjustment. And you can also adjust this little screw here to raise and lower the damper as well. 
Now, the middle pedal is very interesting. The middle pedal is a sostenuto pedal, and when you push some notes and hold them down and then push the pedal, what happens is only those notes will sustain. And the way that works is let's pretend we were doing like a triad here, and we were holding down three notes. And then we wanted to push the sostenuto pedal down. That, that uh, golden colored bar will swing forward, and then there's a little lip on each damper that holds only those three dampers up, which I find very interesting. And then when you let go of the pedal, they fall back down. So it's a very simple way of having, doing a salsa nudo pedal, and I think that's why almost everybody does it. But it's a very cool mechanism, and I just thought I'd show you guys, because I've never showed this before on any of my videos before on my channel. And I, the mechanism here, you can see how that moves as well. The, bar comes down and then as it swings down has a funny hinge that pivots the golden bar. So finally we have the mechanism for the left pedal which is probably the simplest of all of them. It's simply a small little lever there that as you can see when you push the pedal down it moves and then when you lift the pedal up it moves back and so when you push the pedal down it connects up to um, part of the action and then it slides the entire action to the right a little bit so that the hammers are only hitting two strings and that they're also not hitting the strings on the spot where they always hit they're hitting these strings on the spot that they don't usually hit so it's softer and it gives the piano a much different sound and so it's your soft pedal or your una quarter pedal so that's the mechanism for that very simple and like i said i've never showed that before so i just thought i would since i have the opportunity here Hopefully you enjoyed that little tour of the inside of the Schiedmeyer piano. Um, as I've said before, it doesn't say Kawaii anywhere on it, so when I look at this piano, I always think Schiedmeyer, not necessarily Kawaii. And so you may recognize some of those features on the inside of the piano. Like I said, the hinge here for the lid is definitely a Kawaii feature. Perhaps some of the other features on the inside of the action were also Kawaii features, but I just tend to kind of call them Schiedmeyer features because that's the name that's on the piano, and that's what I think of this piano as being, even though it was made by Kawaii in Japan. But now it is time to have a listen of this piano and, and hear what it sounds like and hopefully you enjoy it. The first thing I'm going to play on this piano is a song that I often play on many pianos that I demonstrate. It's a little song that I wrote to test out the piano. It starts off in the treble, goes down to the bass, and it's a good, it, it's, it provides a good example of what the piano sounds like, but it'll also play some other stuff after that as well, so stick around for that. As you can hear, this piano has a very, very nice tone. It's very warm when you get down here into the bass and the tenor, and it's also very clean up here. I think the hammers up in the treble could be a little bit harder, and as I play the piano, the hammers are going to get a little bit harder and brighter. So I think that the, tre the treble on this piano will become very crystalline and very bright and very sparkly uh, over time naturally as I play and practice on this piano. But for now, I think some of the hammers are just a little bit uh, soft, but that could be just my personal taste this C, for example could be a little tiny bit brighter, but as I said, it will naturally become brighter as I practice on this piano. I said the mid-range on this piano is very warm, so I'm going to play a song that really uh, plays a lot in the mid-range, and hopefully it gives a good ex example of what that sounds like. It's actually an old hymn that was reharmonized by Bach, but it, and it was originally written for the organ, but it works very well on piano and sounds very nice, so hopefully you enjoy that as well. I personally really like the sound of this piano. It's very warm, it's very mellow, and it has a really, really nice sound. And uh, I've said that before many times, but I just really like the sound of this piano. One of the things I really like on it is the bass. And even though it's a six-foot piano and the bass isn't going to compete with, say, that of a concert grand, I do think it has a very nice sound in the low bass. Mm -hmm. 
Again, it's not going to compete with a concert grand, but I think for a six foot piano, I think it has a very nice sound to the bass, and I like it a lot. Another thing I think is kind of cool about this piano, it's a very versatile piano. You can play, of course, lots of different music on it, and it all sounds really good. You can play something like this. Which I'm sure many of you know will recognize as the uh, chord progression from Adele, Someone Like You. Or you can play classical music like this. Hopefully you enjoyed this rather in-depth review of my personal Schiedmar C183 practice piano. I think it's going to make a fantastic practice piano and it's going to be a lot of fun to play on. It has a really wonderful sound, which I've said many times before. Now if any of you have any um, information about this piano, uh, this era of Schiedmar, if you have any, you know, uh, just any kind of information whatsoever on this piano, I would love to know because while there's a lot of things I do know about it, mostly the fact that I really like the piano, there's a lot of things that I don't know about it, such as, you know, uh, how long it was made for, or how many of them are made, so if any of you guys have any of that information, I would love to know. Uh, when I bought the piano off of Pencil Piano Brokers, uh, my good friend Greg, who works at the store and I believe owns the store, uh, said that the piano comes with a Bavarian spruce soundboard, which would explain why the piano has such a nice warm sound. And uh, he also said that it came with Renner hammers, uh, which would also explain the nice warm sound. Renner hammers are very quality, and that would explain the really nice sound and awesome feel that I have on this piano. But that's just only some of what I know about this piano. I don't know a whole lot about the piano. So again, if any of you um, know anything about this Schiedmeier piano, please let me know. I would love to know. So hopefully you enjoyed this uh, video. Uh, if you want to go check out my channel, I've got lots of cool videos on pianos. You can actually go find the old videos that I did at the store when I first found this piano. I played the parts of the Caribbean theme, and I played uh, Fantasy Impromptu, I believe, on this piano as well. So if you want to go check those out and hear what loud songs sound like on this piano, you can go do that. And uh, you can also check out my channel. I've got lots of cool videos on pianos and organs and harpsichords and clavichords, all kinds of cool things like that. So if you want to go do that, you might want to think about subscribing. And if you do subscribe, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.